Uh, my name is Danielle Loftus Koch. I am a uh, administrative supervisor for the cardiothoracic ICU at Hackensack University Medical Center. Okay. Um, I decided to become a nurse very early on in my life. I think in my eighth grade um, yearbook I put that I was going to be a nurse. I'm not sure what it was, but I think for me it was just a calling. And I went to one year of um, what, I went through one year of classical civilizations uh, majoring at Fordham University. And then I thought, what am I doing? I know what I need to do. And I uh, went to nursing school. I'm sure I, I played nurse as a kid. Um, <laughs> I know I had this Fisher Price doctor set that my mother probably still has in her attic. <laughs> Life since the pandemic started has changed in a number of ways. I would say um, I'm a better nurse. I would say I'm hopefully a better parent. Um, I would say I have a better understanding of the very difficult job that my um, children's teachers <laughs> have. So um, all in all, I, I think I'm coming out of this as a person who's grown, a person who's learned, and all around a better nurse, a better caretaker, and maybe, maybe a better teammate as well because that was such a crucial part of this entire pandemic so far. The idea that I'm putting strangers in front of my family doesn't, doesn't feel right to me. I, I don't look at it that way. I know that I left my family and I went to the hospital where I was exposed to something that could make me sick, but I also know that I would want someone there taking care of my family member. I know that the hospital provided us with what we needed to get the right job done, and they were focused on the safety of our staff. So I didn't feel as much that I was putting the patients in front of my family. When you're at work, whether it's 8, 12, 16 hours, the patients are your family. And, and that's what I've learned at Hackensack. I've been there for 25 years you're caring for someone like you would care for a family member. And, and my family understood. And they've been incredibly supportive throughout this process. Um, I spent the very early part of my career in oncology. Um, and that was a very unique field to begin my career in. Um, we saw a range of illness and a range of stages in disease process. And I learned a great deal and moved on to ICU. The ICU population is the population of patients that I enjoy working with the most. I see patients come in critically ill and we are able to turn the corner and we have great success stories. And when we haven't been able to turn that corner, we've been able to make that connection with the family and learn so much about the patient from before they were critically ill. It's a, it's a huge part of what we do is connecting and in the ICU, I, I'm partial to it because I've been there for almost 20 years now, but in the ICU, that opportunity is probably the greatest. How has that prepared you for today's pandemic? Working in the ICU for as long as I have has definitely given me a good foundation to work in this pandemic. Um, it was on a scale that none of us could have imagined, but my ability to react quickly, my ability to motivate my teammates, um, my ability to rely on my teammates who I knew were amazing and always there for me as I was there for them, um, has definitely prepared me well for this pandemic. Just the, the care you provide, the very basics of it, you learn in the ICU. Um, we were able to take um, nurses from other fields, other areas, and they were able to buddy with us but the ICU nurses and the emergency room nurses, those nurses with critical care back, backgrounds were the, um, the backbone of this whole response. My worst day during this pandemic was probably the very first day we were made aware that a patient had arrived. Because prior to that, it was not 
it was not real. It wasn't going to happen. It was not going to happen on a scale that they said it could happen on. But when that first patient arrived, um, it had, it, it had a, I felt it in my chest. Uh, it wasn't a shortness of breath. It wasn't a, a straight out panic, but it was the realization that it's here. And that day, I lead a team of critical care nurses, and I had to talk to them about the fact that we would be deployed to certain areas to help care for these patients. Um, it was incredibly hard to do because you want to keep your team safe and you don't want to put them in harm's way. Going over the proper donning and doffing of the equipment and the, the, the gear that we use to go in and out of these rooms, I remember just not yelling it, but being very forceful about how important it was and how they had to listen to what I was saying and how they had to pay attention to each step in the process and take it seriously. And they did, they did, but, but that was probably, that was the, I know that there were things that have happened that weren't great. There were difficult times, but asking team members to step into this with you was, a feeling that I hope never to have had. There have been, there's been more than one best day, and I don't know if that's surprising to hear. The amount of people and the effort that was concentrated on taking care of this population, the, the hospital itself, we have our different departments. We operate sometimes in, in different silos. I've worked there for 25 years, and uh, there are people that have worked there as long that I've never met. This was that opportunity where I met everyone. And you really get to know someone when you are dealing with a crisis. I can tell you that coming out of this, the staff at Hackensack University Medical Center has come together. We've developed a bond. We see each other in the hallway now, and even with the mask on, you recognize who that person is and you know you wave you ask them what they're doing that day they might have been deployed to other teams it's just this ability to transcend what we do on an everyday basis and come together as one team physicians environmental services respiratory therapists there's not one component that wasn't important in this and the fact that everyone stepped up um, made many days a great day. I never could have predicted experiencing something like this in my lifetime. It, it never happened here. It could never happen here. Um, I could never have imagined how we would have responded to it. Um, and as we did respond to it, how we adapted to it as quickly as we did, as quickly as we could. Um, we were heavily reliant on each other. and. I say it to my staff now when we meet for huddles or um, staff meetings, this is the biggest event in terms of my career. This is the biggest thing, the greatest challenge that we've all faced. I don't think anyone has experienced this. And we did it together and I hope to never do it again. But I know if we have to, we've done it once and, and we're stronger for it and more knowledgeable. I've learned so much about the resilience of not just nurses, but of people. Every individual that participated in the care or participated in the cleaning or participated in the admitting of all of these patients, every one of these people had to have courage beyond what we thought we had to step into a room for the first time to draw blood from a patient for the first time, to, to, to any step in the process, you know, to clean the room after the patient left, the person who did that, it took great courage. It was, sometimes you found yourself holding your breath. Sometimes you found yourself like with your, with your shoulders touching your earlobes because you were so tense, but they did it. So 
I mean, it just makes me feel this, this like burning in my chest that like, I get to work with these people. I get to work with the people that fought this battle and won this war. There's, there's so much to say about it, but I think what's important now is looking forward and looking at what we do going forward. And we've learned so much and we've all become better clinicians. We know how to care for our patients. We knew that before, but now we have this very unique situation that has taken us to another level. So when patients come into the hospital, they can be certain that the person taking care of them fought that battle and made it through and brought patients through with them. And that's what we want to do for all of the patients that we see at Hackensack prior to the pandemic, during the pandemic, and now after the pandemic that we're strong enough to care for them and, and people that, you know, choose to come through our organization. I, like I said, I've been there a long time. I'm just, I just want to, I, I don't want people to be afraid. I want people to know that it's okay to seek care. That it's okay to, um, you know, come into the hospital and to, to, to make sure that they know that they're going to be safe, that we're going to take good care of them, that, that we're going to use everything that we've learned to protect them and uh, help them stay healthy. Cool. Thank you.